that was la 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 always they always know exactly where um what they're doing and trust me you need to go and get their book i've been reading that book in the last two days it's been a very it's been very good can you hear me yeah yes. i can hear you <laughs> okay so um basically let's start with co-parenting okay now for for people who you okay, you understand officially that we are no more together um we have a child together we have kids together and it gets to a point where if i'm not happy i act a certain way if she's not happy she acts a certain way and that the, the more the, the kids are growing they get to see that tension between the parents so right. how do, what do we advise parents now that are separated and trying to cooperate uh in how to handle situations like this because the kids cannot see this right if luckily you guys are have separated or you are divorced and the kids don't see the kind of issues that you guys have every day now how can we make sure that now that you're not living together these kids don't see that tension in between yourselves okay so um is it separated but living under the same roof no or? separated living apart living apart yes i mean if you're separated living apart i would hope that you've come to the conclusion that you have nothing emotional with that person just your child if you have to have feelings or feel some type of way anytime you're around that person then you basically are not being self-sustainable you have to fix with your own you have to fix your own demons that's what I think. But if you guys are indifferent, you're in a place where you don't care if the other person is seeing someone else, you guys separated amicably, it won't be a problem. It'll be natural for you guys to be happy together around your kids. But if you still expect, now some people are manipulative, so they want to be in their baby father's life or baby mother's life because they hope they can get back together. It's not going to work. It just mm. won't work. So you have to be emotionally uh, separated completely. And that's okay, even if you want to take yourself out of the child's life for a few years to get yourself together. You need to do that for yourself. If not, there's so, going to be problems. All right, so what, 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 what's your contribution to that? I mean, it, it depends. You know, my first question is always, who is complaining? Who is the person that's complaining? Uh, because a lot of time, is one one side of the of the relationship that's complaining about something. I want to know mm -hmm. who the person is that's complaining. But like she said, ultimately, uh, you if you're the one that's complaining, you have to find your way to emotional stability. If you can find your way to emotional stability, then you can see clearly. You know, you're about people. I don't think you speak Yoruba, right? You don't speak that. <laughs> Well, they say, I'll say it in English, but let me say it in English first so I can get my head correct. All right, so they said, Toju Bafa Bale Arimu. Like that means if the eyes just calm down, if you see the nose. So if you're not emotionally stable, there's going to be chaos everywhere. But in order to help any particular specific situation, I want to know who is complaining. Whoever the person who is complaining is, they ultimately have the utmost control of what's going on if they are willing to learn how to manage the emotions there. The truth is that if there is a emotions, uh, emotional equity of some sort, if you are emotionally invested somehow, some way into the other parent, there are gonna be issues. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, but you advise do you advise um separated couples to still live together? Okay, yeah, we're separated, we're no more together, but do you advise them to still live together? If they can handle it, not a lot of people can handle that. It's not easy. I feel like for us, our friendships work for us. Like we're more of best friends. So we could call a bit in the same place. If you know that you can't stand it or you can't even see your spouse, talk to someone else on the phone while you're there. You have to remove yourself from the situation. It's going to okay. be toxic. And the children are so wise. They see everything. You think they're not paying attention. They can, they can feel the vibe. Your energy will change. 
So it depends on couple to couple. If you guys can do it and stay in the house, I know a couple of people like that. And I also know people who cannot stand that. So they take themselves out of the situation. Yeah, someone like me, I can't stand it. So um, gotta, definitely, I can't be separated yeah. with someone that still live in the same. Because right. okay, for for um for no, before you, before you continue, sorry to cut you off. There was yeah. an example that I actually had last week, and he yeah. was asking if he should stay uh, in the house or he should move. And after speaking to him for a few minutes, I realized he still wanted the girl, but also with respect to they are friends and they still talk. And I say, if you still want her, you don't need to bring up that you want to move out. That's your opportunity to showcase your new self and allow her to be attracted back to you. If, the, if you have a situation where you're always uh, acting out mm -hmm. or you want to, you also, also want to pull her back into a relationship without it being an idea, then it's better to move on as fast as you can so that you can work on yourself. Okay, so when, when um, someone like me, for example, when I'm remarrying, right? What do I tell my kids? About what? About okay, moving I'm, on? Yeah, but I'm, like, I'm, when I'm remarrying, for example, I have a new woman in my life who is going to be my wife. And what do I tell my kids? Like my, for my son, um, he's very inquisitive. Right. What do I tell him that? It, what do I tell him that? Oh, this is your new, this your new mother or what? 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 What do you think would be an advice to people that are remarrying? What do you? What do you tell? What was the right thing to tell your kids? Because they'll always ask the question. Um, honestly, I think you have to be open-minded. You have to be open to your kids. You can't lie to them because if you do, it, it gets worse. It has to. The kid already know for some reason that you guys are not together. Now you've decided to uh, bring somebody else in that you're getting married to. You want to talk to your kids first. There's someone that I'm seeing and this person is actually a nice person. You want them to come around and feel familiar with them. Me, honestly, I don't feel like, I feel like people think that when they are moving on, they need the permission of their ex to move on. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But your children have to be introduced properly. And you should know that relationship is going to be stable. Don't just take them to a new girlfriend and then the next week you break up. You're taking the kid through every, that process again that you did with the mother. That's so you need right. to be open with them. You know, me and mommy were not together for, you know, reasons best known to us. But we are best friends. So yeah. I have someone I'm saying, and this is grown people's business. You wouldn't understand now you understand when you're older. You just carry them along. Yeah. So you're, saying that, um, so you're saying that, that uh, before I, I go to Oga to speak, uh, so you're saying that uh, if you are in a relationship, before your kids know that you're in a relationship, it should be somebody you are sure that you are ending up with. Yes. So you don't, you don't take them through different people, different people, and they keep yes. saying Yes. So what do you have to say about it? I mean, you should, um, you know, there are no more stages that happens when you're dating a new person. They're still, they're normally a girlfriend first. You start courting, you start dating them. Um, during that process, if you that person should get to know your child once that person becomes an important person in your life. Mm. Uh, this is Auntie so, so so yeah, this is daddy's girlfriend. It's okay to say things like that. It's okay as long as it's the honest truth, mm -hmm. right? Even yeah. when it comes down to the uh, to the part where they shouldn't go through so many people. Honestly, don't stress yourself out too much about that in real life. Sometimes you have to go through a few people before you marry a person. Yeah. Just be honest with the child in that process. That will relieve your stress. You remove all of the extra addicts. Should I tell them now? Should I, am I counting bodies? The baby don't care. You just, you just need to be honest with them at the end of the day. If you're doing that, when it comes to them becoming, a, okay, you're going to have a stepmom, not a new mom, because mm -hmm. the mom needs to be still the mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A healthy thing to do, right? Yeah. But they're gonna, you're, 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 you're gonna have a, a stepmom. You have a another. You have a second mom. It's okay to say that some people don't like the stepmom thing. Just say you have a second mom. You're blessed. You're a blessed child. I'm gonna pray for you. Things like that. Just uh, continuous positive affirmations uh, that you would normally do if you were being honest. Even if that means something happened in that relationship and you have to go to another, it's okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you're training your kids. They're watching you. That's how you're training them for their own life in the future as well. Hmm. 
Okay, so when you when um, you know their families were they are separated, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, they are separated, and the mom, you know, most times when kids are separated, when fam families are separated, the families uh, leave the ki the kids live with their mothers, like that's like eighty percent of the time. Yes. Yeah. And then, if the woman has something in her mind that she, uh, someone said, Ubi, my wife left me, bro, packed out while I was asleep and left for Lagos. Hmm? Wow. <laughs> what? What is that? So, um, so, wow, that, that's wow. my friend. I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. Okay, so, um, what, what, what I was saying is, 80% of the time, the kids, when there's separation, 80% of the time when there's separation, the kids live with their mothers. Now, if the woman is someone that is angry because of the things that happen with, that cause the separation, the woman starts telling the kids things that would spoil their minds mm. against their dads or um, the man against their, uh, uh, against, uh, against their mothers. So how can we... What do you think are the best things to balance up this kind of situation? Because these kids cannot grow with anger against each of their parents, you know. So, so what can be done about that? <laughs> you know, this is this is what we this, this is what we specialize in um, when there's crisis because you know it's, it's sweet and all done the when we're just both best friends and we can just talk about it and we move on and. and but it's usually not like that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the picture you just painted is usually what happens. It's like a very, very toxic situation. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen in that point that whoever is complaining first, that person needs to step it up and take control of the situation. And that sometimes means patience. Sometimes that means, like she mentioned earlier, sometimes you have to let go for a little bit so you can see what's happening and see how you can bring find some amicable place. Just to let them go a little bit will help people settle down and help them rethink it. But if you go in front of that person's face, it could be the man or woman, and you're arguing, but then you are helping now. The picture, the exact picture you don't want, you're helping create mm. it, right? The picture that you've been painted, the picture that's been painted about you to the kid. You're proving once it. Once you figure something and you respond the same way. The, the kids look at, look at you and say, oh, this is a picture that they painted against this person, and I think my mom is correct, or I think my dad. A little bit, so that the, you can put the devil to shame. Okay, that's the language some people understand here. Some people say don't mm. use the word girlfriend. Mm. Nigerian people are stuck in 1990, <laughs> but it's okay. All right, <laughs> right? You get my point. Like, just pull back a little bit, so that, because the devil is always looking for, devil doesn't pull out, somebody from a, a stranger, it doesn't pull them from the street to work on you. It's gonna use how you react mm. to circumstances to destroy what you have or attempt to destroy what you have going on. It's not going to pull, so like devil's not gonna come down in the form of a black cloth. It's going to use your reaction. So when you get tested, it's in the middle of that test that you get to prove that, hmm, I can't see my child. Sometimes people take you to court, they, they drag you through court system and stuff like that for custody and stuff like that. Just stay calm, let it go for a minute, relax, and then come back to the table and see if you can negotiate. And it's not going to be as straightforward as ideal. It's going to take some work. It's gonna pull out some, some of your emotional energy as well too. It's gonna to take everything in you to not fight back and to prove whatever they painted, the picture they painted about you, to not prove, don't prove them right. That's the point I'm saying. Just. Back off a little bit, especially if you're the man. Back off a little bit. Let her take care of her child. If you're the woman, I understand it's extremely hurtful for someone to take your child away from you. It's extremely hurtful. I get it. But you're not going to help if you overreact. You're going to make things even more worse. Okay. Um, from experience, uh, but before I, before I say that, why do you think some men have the guts, right, to have a child and never pay for the child to be taken care of, like they don't pay for. So do you think there's something that there's, there's, it, there, there's a way some men are created? Because it doesn't make sense. 
There are men that I know, like sometimes I check my DM and I'll see DMs like, um, I, since, I, since my child was born, his father has never sent a dime to, uh, to, to us. And his father is somewhere uh, with other um, with another woman, and she has no. So, do you think those men is this is this something that has broken them, or is there something that has blocked their sense of reasoning that they cannot send money for their kids' upkeep? What do you um, think is the problem? That's a deadbeat nature. I can guarantee you that a man that doesn't take care of his own child, he won't do the same even with the woman that is with. The woman is probably taking care of him. There is no real man. I don't care if you're poor or rich that won't take care of his own state. If you don't have money, the little you have, you will send it and say, you know what? This is all I get. But the ones that don't take care of their kids at all, I'm sorry. There's no excuse with that one. They're just a deadbeat, point blank period. That's hmm. my own belief. But you want to know why, right? You want to know why. Someone like me, yeah. sometime yeah. Sometime in April, right? Uh -huh. One of my baby mama called me out on social media for reasons I don't even know about. Not that I, from when she was pregnant, I, I paid for Auntie Nata everything month to month. You know, from even when she was pregnant, I put her, I moved her from her house and put her in an Airbnb apartment that was more comfortable. For the entire period, so she's comfortable. I paid, even at six months, I paid the entire hospital bills. I've sent money for the entire hospital bills. When the kid was born, I bought everything. I've done everything, not owing, one thing. But she still later came out and was abusing me on social media. But the thing is this: for someone like me, even when I struggled the next month to say, you know what, I'm not going to send upkeep, it was impossible. I you worry. Okay. You do like, you know, it's also I'll call I'll call um I'll call my I'll call my my because my mom if my mom hears that you have a child she doesn't care what you do just send something and I'll struggle with it so I'll I'll, I'll talk to somebody I say I'll talk to one of my my family I say he said don't allow mommy hear this just whatever you can do and. The good thing is, the the, 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 my, the mothers of my kids, right? All of them, at least the ones that I can I can vouch for, they go all the way out to make sure that my kids are taken care of. Do you understand? Right. They go all the way out. So for me, it's also an inspiration. Like someone like um, Sandra Ihua, she's here. She does anything possible to make sure that my kids, have, my ki my daughter has. The best. the best. Lillian does everything to make sure my daughter, my son has the best. You understand? Same with my, my first daughter, Zanetta. Her mother does everything to make sure that Zanetta has the best. You know, so when I when I look at when I look at things, right? I always ask myself that as much as these things are happening, mm -hmm. right? Why do men just sit down there and they don't they, they, they have that they are so hardened to send in, even if it's twenty thousand naira to their kids for just upkeep. Mm. If I don't send money to my kids, I'm restless. Mm. That's a real if even, see, The worst thing you can do, <laughs> they, they know, if you mm. want me to go mad, mm -hmm. yeah, just don't allow me to talk to my son or my mm. daughter. Mm. Yeah. That's, so, that's, so, that's the only thing that, mm. money, is not as, see, money is not as important to me as much as my kids are. See, my kids are first before anybody. Mm. Do you understand? So mm. for, for, for men that, for, for me, I'll just say it. A lot of us have gone through several things in life, right? Mm. A lot of us have gone. If I wanted to go by the things that have happened to me within my self and uh, my, the uh, mothers of my kids, mm. I would never have even been talking to any of them, right? But you see, sometimes you, you find out that you need to sit back. What I did this year in the last 15 weeks, one thing that I've done, I'll, I'll say it here is, I sat back ask myself several questions. And one question I ask myself is, come, Ubi, if you say, Mr. A did this, 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 what was your contribution? Girl mm -hmm. talk. Yeah. One thing I have done in the last 15 weeks is sit back and ask myself 
questions. I reviewed, you know, if, you know when it feels like you're reviewing contracts. Mm -hmm. I reviewed every relationship I've had, both mm -hmm. male and female. Every relationship I've had that is not working anymore. I've asked mm -hmm. myself, where did you go wrong? What did you contribute to that? Mm -hmm. What did you contribute to that? Because that is one thing a lot of people don't ask themselves. Yes. 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 You know, we're we are, we are too we are too easy to say. We're too easy to say. One finger. Did this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, pointing fingers at. I sit back and ask myself one one thing. How did you contribute to this thing? Mm -hmm. So I'm more careful now in terms of relating with the mothers of my kids. Yes. If I'm talking to you and it's, it's difficult to for, for me to break you, I'll just look for somebody that I know that is uh, like our uncle or someone that is uh, our mutual friend. I say, see, mm -hmm. I know that I'm not supposed to tell you this, but this is what is going on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear, you know, calm down. Just give mm -hmm. it some time. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you one thing I've come to understand. Right. The biggest thing I have learned over time is that time does more things than anything in this world. Yes. Yeah. Facts. Four yeah. years ago, four years ago, my son will be four tomorrow. Four years ago, when we we're about to, when we we're, uh, we're, when we were, um, when we got back to Nigeria from America okay. to have a baby. From the airport, from the airport, that's where I was separated, from the airport. Wow. I was crying, I was weeping at the airport. But guess what? Mm. My uncle called, my uncle was, my uncle came to the airport to pick me up. Mm. He said, come. He said, do you know that time will show you that this boy will walk on his own legs one day and come to your house? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I said, why are you bothering yourself? So I left. Now, but the thing is this, the same time has also taught me that a lot of things that we pay attention to today are not as, so for me, these are, these are very uncomfortable conversations, mm. but I, the reason why I'm deciding to have this conversation is because I've gotten to the point where I, un, I, I have understood that people don't want to have conversations like this because of how they want people to view them. Mm -hmm. View me how you want to view me. But one yeah. thing is simple. I'll tell you something. If you are going through anything right now, give it time. Yes. It time. time is the reason. See, I've, I've healed so much mm -hmm. that mean I now know that I've healed because I can speak about some things. You can talk about it. Yeah. See, the best people that are in my life are the mothers of my kids. Though it's not like everything is perfect, but I, they are the best right yes. now. Because Absolutely. They've kept my kids safe. You understand? They love my kids as much as I love. And that you know, should be so good enough for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. and that's all you really need. Yeah, exactly. Understanding that, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I every time I get very worried, you see me go around, I backtrack, go around, and I say, Hi, hey, this woman is the reason why my son or my daughter they are doing well today. So whatever I say, I always say, you know what I always say? Mm -hmm. I always say to my kids that. I'm taking this bullshit because of you. You know, well, it's fine. It's, 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 it's exciting because mm -hmm. you know that it's exciting because you know that they are the covering, you understand, that your kids um, your kids have because they are the ones that are there with them every day. You know, for someone like me, I'm not with my kids every, every other day, but their mothers mm -hmm. are with them every day. And I see my daughter, you know, I was talking to my, um, my first daughter's mom yesterday. And she was like, please, can you come and take Z for six months? Then you yes. understand what I've been doing. Because my daughter is a tiger. You know, you know yeah. what? She's strong. She's, if she, she can, if you, before she eats, mm -hmm. you, she will have to jump around the entire house before wow. she finishes a plate of Indomie. So, oh, wow. you know, so that energy. So I, I, I can't really understand, you know, working and also taking care of kids. But mm -hmm. one thing is this. Social media has put us in a position where we are unable to let our experiences speak mm. and let people know that for someone like me who is popular, mm. you would have called me every name you want to call me in life. Okay. But one thing is, I've always said that I'm a, I'm, a, 
I'm the sacrificial lamb to a lot of people. If you don't learn anything right. from me mm -hmm. that has happened to me over the years, I, I'm sorry, but you need to understand that mm -hmm. as much as possible, wherever you want to go, everybody has an issue. Yes. Yes. But try to use yours to impact in people. Mm -hmm. It has happened to me. You understand? And when people say, oh, you have four kids from four different women, I'm I I looking at them, listen, you guys are talking and about things that are that, something that has already happened. Right. Why not I come on IG Live and tell you not to do it? You should do it a different way because you might not be able to survive how I've survived. Yeah, it's your journey. So do you understand? it's my journey. And, and now what? my journey is what I'm ready to speak about to help people get get help. Yeah. You know, so I really I really want to first of all thank both of you for um I, I got I got a, a copy of your book. I've been awesome. reading it and it feels like you know when you're reading something and it feels like things are splashing in your face. Ah uh, that's good. That's it's been good. really great. So I want you, uh, madam, I know you were not here the last time we spoke about the book. Yeah. I want you to say something about the book so people can buy it. Then I'll bring on my next guest. Um, well, the book, you can get it on uh, lolanola.com. Mm -hmm. The book yeah. talks about our life, what we went through. I, I told the story of, of how I felt <laughs> during our marriage. And uh, he spoke about what he, you know, learned along the way. And uh, actually writing one right now. Because uh, we want to save marriages. We want to tell people that it doesn't matter what happened in your marriage. It's just a marriage, that title, or divorce, that title, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. You can get through anything as long as you're best friend with your spouse. Yeah. And we also want to encourage people to have happy marriages, not just being a marriage because you're counting years. Because I know a lot of that exists. You, and that's one thing I decided for myself. I told my husband, if we're not going to have a happy marriage, if you're not going to be all the way in and I'm all the way in, I don't want this. Hmm. Because our children are watching. And guess what? You continue to produce damaged kids mm -hmm. when you pretend to be happy when you're not happy. So hmm. our books talk about that and how we use the GPS. We, we depend on God. We believe in God and our purpose. That's very important. Whatever I'm passionate about, I need to focus on that. Whatever he's passionate about, he needs to focus on that. And then self-improvement. I have to continue to build myself because I'm not a perfect human being. I have my own weaknesses. Books online. For us, just to, you know, get sick and just get lost mentally. Mental disease is real. Yeah. I, 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 I went through it without even knowing that I, I had it. I was depressed. I didn't know I was depressed. But when the panic attacks started kicking in, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? I'm a fun person. So why am I, why am I sad? And I hmm. had to, you know, check myself. I had to go take care of myself. And that was the point where I checked out of the marriage. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I can't lie to you. Because if I didn't go through that, I won't be the Lola I'm here today. Today I'm strong. Today I'm I'm happy and I'm hopeful. And you know, I just want to give love. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you guys should get the book. The book is awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Read. Yeah. It's very all right. easy to digest. <laughs> all right, so guys, you can get the book from Lola and Ola.com. Yes. Um, it's a very interesting book. I've been reading it. Um I've been reading that book and I hope to bring you guys up on different sessions on this um, conversation because it's going to continue because we, I'm ready to have as many uncomfortable conversations. Every time it's not business, business, business. We're ah. jumping the gun in life today. And I believe yeah. that there's nothing that will help us settle life easier than to have conversations that will help us, will help also the young people. Yes. Today you hear more marriage breakup. You know, you said something that is very important. I was telling a friend a few days ago, like, there are people in marriages today because they are counting the years. Yes. But they are really not happy in that marriage. They want to say, oh, I'm 10 years in marriage. They want to say, oh, I'm 20 years in marriage. So but they are actually not happy in the marriage. They are just there yes. because they want to count the years, you know, yes. and because it's depression. I want to say thank you so much for honoring me to come on the show. Thank you so much. You're for welcome. Thank, thank you, man. Just, us. We're just one DM away anytime, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bro. All right. All right, uh, that was Lala and Lala.
always they always know exactly where um what they're doing and trust me you need to go and get their book 